What's up guys? Today we're going to look at something that's just batshit crazy. It's just useless, crazy, useless. I feel dirty for having done this and you'll probably feel dirty for having watched this. Here's the scenario. Last month I was out on vacation with the family it's in Savannah, Georgia, which if you haven't been is a very nice town. And I get an email from one of the guys at work saying when I try to check in trying to update a table or what have you in Postgres, I'm getting these weird error messages. And should I reboot the server? Because we're a Windows shop and that's just what you do um, with Windows stuff. So I write back and the error message was basically saying, I can't do this, the drive is full. So I write back and go, well, is the drive full? And they look and they go, well, yes, it is full. So at this point, it's Friday afternoon. I say, don't touch anything. I don't want them to bring the server down and have Postgres not start because it drives full. Just leave it alone and I'll fix it over the weekend. And I did. Postgres people, by the way, you're awesome. Awesome. Postgres with that drive, data drive completely full kept right on trucking. It was handling all the queries fine. All the websites were up. All it would do is if you tried to add data, it would say, I can't let you add data right now because I don't have anywhere to put this shit. But it kept running. Any other database server I've ever worked with would have just freaked had that happen. So Postgres people, you know you're awesome, but you're awesome again. But this leads to a, a bigger problem we have, that being um, we have an IT group that's supposed to let us know, notify us when bad things start happening on servers when drives start getting full, when a server's down, when different bad things start happening. But in practice, that almost never occurs. We almost never get notified when bad things start happening to our servers. And I don't want to harsh on them too much because there's a small number of them and a large number of servers. And if you've ever looked at the Windows event log, it is just a wailing banshee of horror. You, if you haven't looked at it, go, go take a peek. You'll be amazed your Windows machine ever boots. It's just a freak show. And it can be very difficult to parse out from that things that you really need to worry about and things that are just Windows roll around on the floor like a crazy person. So I don't want to harsh on them too much. But on the other hand, we really need to know this stuff. As Jeff Atwood said, if your customers have to let you know that your stuff is down, you kind of suck at your job. And right now, customers kind of have to let us know when our stuff is down. That's not good. Now, the proper way to do server monitoring is you just install Nagios or Xenos. And it's, that's, it's just great software. and It'll monitor a hundred million different things and you can do all kinds of, you know, chain of events. Should this happen, do these other things. It's really, really great. Didn't do that because the controller uh, server or the monitor server where Nagios actually runs or ZenOS or whatever is generally a Linux box and it's really hard to get a Linux box at Mecklenburg County. Um, and the other problem, the other problem is they've actually locked down the uh, how you pull that information from Windows Server. It's like SMP or SNMP or something like that. They've locked all that down, all the servers, because uh, that's clearly a security risk. So that would have taken another act of Congress, and you learn in government that you have X amount of energy versus Y amount of bureaucracy, and you really have to parse that out sparingly. So instead of doing the proper thing, uh, being an idiot, I decided I would just make my own little thing just to check a few things. And that's what I did. And I called it Bones. For good Leonard McCoy, uh, Bones, Dr. McCoy, he's dead, Jim. Just seemed to make sense. And it's just checking a few things. It's saying, one, is the server up? Good thing to know. Two, how long has it been up? And when I checked that, we discovered this one server has not been put on the reboot schedule 
because it's been up for like a month. And if you manage Windows servers, you know, if you keep them up for more than a week or two at a time, they start doing weird flaky things. So how long has it been up? How much free RAM is there? In other words, do we have to worry about it going into swap death? And how much disk capacity is there? Do we have to worry about going into amount of drive space death? In other words, is it down or is it about to be down? And that's all it's capturing. And it puts that, it captures that every five minutes and it puts it into this little web page where you can see graphically where everything is, graphically, sort of. And it will also, you can set some parameters in it. So if the drive space gets below 10% of free space on a drive for a server, or the RAM gets below 512 meg, or the server's just down, it'll send me and another person in our group an email and let us know that. So now hopefully we can get notified before our customers have to call us and go, hey, your shit's down, because that's not a good thing. Now this is done via PowerShell. And the thing about PowerShell is it's, it's not very good. Matter of fact, it's, it's pretty terrible. It's a terrible, terrible thing. I don't know what Microsoft was thinking with PowerShell. They, it's like they had a computer science major write an entire programming language just for your shell. And it's apropos to nothing. It's like nothing else you'll ever see. It's like nothing else you ever will ever see again, hopefully. So it's not like any other kind of shell or programming language you've ever seen. It's like returning objects on my command line. I don't want object-oriented shit on my command line. It's, it's just bizarre. And on top of all that, it's really, really slow. Like pulling servers on our local network, just pulling six of them, take 10 and 20 seconds to get some basic information. I don't know what they were thinking with PowerShell. It's a really, really terrible thing. It's, uh, it's, it's just bad. But for this kind of thing, PowerShell is the Microsoft way to do that. And when you hitch your wagon to a proprietary horse, you have to go where the proprietary horse takes you, even if it drags you through the mud. So this is done in PowerShell. And I took a script uh, I found that did some of what I wanted. Um, this script was really checking drive space and up or down. So I took that and I kind of redid the whole thing because I, I stylistically and for some other reason I didn't like the way it was doing it. And I added a little train to send an email if things are bad and I added checking the free RAM space and I totally changed the way it was formatting the results. But this dude gets credit for getting me going uh martin Pugh, the surly admin on twitter you're awesome this script helped a lot this helped a great deal and i'll just go through really briefly what this does and some of it even tell you i'm not even sure what it's doing here because it's powershell it's 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 freaking weird but this is running this is how you set up powershell to be like a command line tool so you can pass it arguments um, again, weird. I don't know why you can't just capture arguments like you do in Python and every other language and not have to re-screw everything else just to do it. PowerShell is just weird. So it's basically you're getting a list of servers um, and that's coming from a text file in this case. You just put a server on every line. You set some thresholds. Here we're saying if the drive glows below 10% free space on a server, or if the RAM is below 512 megabytes. And that sounds like a lot. You're probably going, well, I run all my stuff on a 512 meg, you know, PAS server or a, um, a VPN server. Windows 512 is not very much. Um, what credentials? Those are your Active Directory credentials because it's PowerShell. Um, where the credential file is going to get stored, what your SMTP server is, where you want to put the results, and uh, where you want 
the email addresses you want to send an alert to if things have gone really bad. So you can actually pass arguments to overwrite all this stuff that you put as defaults in your PowerShell file, which is all right. Uh, and PowerShell divides uh, these kind of things into a begin process and end. Um, so on begin, you'd put some like general functions you want to call and some general things you want to do like that. Um, and processes would run that. Ah, PowerShell. So here's what we have from the begin. We are uh, changing the directory to where the PowerShell script is. We are getting credentials. And this is kind of, I'll give PowerShell some credit here. This is kind of neat. When you run it the first time, it'll ask you for the password for that credential, for that username you gave it. And then it'll make a credential file in the same folder of that PowerShell script. And then you'll never have to be bothered with that again. And the credential, it's storing like some hashed authentication crap. I mean, it just looks like a big weird string. So that's kind of neat. I really don't understand anything this is doing here, but it worked perfectly from uh, uh, Martin's script. So there it is. A little function to send an email, and then uh, we're in process. We're taking that file and getting all those uh, server names into an array. And then we're basically doing a 4H for each through each thing in that array. And it's doing a couple things. First, it'll see if it can connect. Um, if it can't connect at all, server's down, like if the server's just not there at all, that's a red flag. If it can connect but can't retrieve the information, that's a different thing. That's usually a permissions problem. So you're not getting an email over that. You need admin rights on the server to pull this information through PowerShell. You might be able to do it with less than admin rights, but it, it works with admin rights. So it's going to try to get disk information. It'll get that and it'll get all this stuff and it's storing this into these, um, you know, kind of variable things. You notice even here that the syntax is just of PowerShell is, is just just batshit. It's going to check the RAM. Um, you notice you can't even do like uh, uh, greater than or equal normally like this. It has these weird dash uh, parameters for conditional statements. Just batshit, man, batshit. So what it's doing for this stuff is it's basically making rows to put in this output table. It's making rows to put into this table. And so there it's catching the free RAM. And if it's above or below our threshold, it's basically adding a class to that uh, uh, table column or, or table element so you can basically color it red if you need to. And when it runs into a thing it doesn't like, it's storing this in this errors variable, which we're setting at null up at the top. Dollar sign null is null. And uh, it's going along. So at the very end, it'll have a whole, any errors are ran to in this errors variable and you can pass that along in the email. Now we're going to uh, go down here. We're checking for less than 10 space, 10% 10 of space on a drive. And this is basically setting again a class for that. This is, is done, it's kind of neat. Basically this green is showing how much is free as the light green. So the dark green is how much is used. That's basically just uh, divs set to a percentage width for that element based on how much is free from the capacity. And that's that's how that's coloring this in, which is, which is kind of neat. Uh, Martin, Martin did that. Yeah, this code is just, it's just, it's, it's even hard to read and talk about it, it's so weird. Now this is kind of neat.
One thing Martin did I didn't really like is that he was returning his script the entire HTML page. And to me, that's you're just crossing the streams there. Um, makes for some really hard to maintain code. Um, so what I did is I just made an index file and just a little bootstrap. And I'm putting these comment tags like server report and end server report. And it's running some regular expression here. It's getting, and notice even this is weird. You're getting um, the this index.html, which is kind of like my template. And you're basically replacing anything in between those two tags with including those two tags. So you're replacing basically those two tags and anything in between them, and you're filling it back in with those two tags again, plus the rows of that table you just built. So here what we're doing this index.html is we are filling in the rows in this T body tag. And every time it runs, it just replaces whatever's within those two stuff. So every five minutes, it replaces that. So it's doing two replacements, once for the body of that table and once again just to let you know when the last time it is this ran. I can re refresh this now. It's refreshing to sometime within the last five minutes. So that's kind of some neat regex stuff. And then we're basically taking that index.html file which is stored locally and we're pushing it out to our destination which will be somewhere on a web server that people can, can go to it and look at it if they want to. And then finally, if, there's, if that errors isn't null anymore, in other words, we wrote something to that errors file, it's going to send that uh, email out, basically saying he's dead Jim with all those errors spelled out for you. And that is the PowerShell script. It's like 181 lines of yuck PowerShell. But it works and it runs and every five minutes, and I'll put all this code on the blog post if you're looking at this on YouTube. Um, it works. So there's that. And it spits this out and it lets us know some very basic, your server's down or about to be down kind of information. And hopefully we will be able to track this stuff down before our customers do. Because if your customers have to tell you when your stuff is down, you kind of suck a little bit and you don't want to suck. So that's it. That's uh, what I have. Again, uh, if you feel dirty for having seen uh, saw how I did this, don't feel bad. I feel dirty for how I did this. But it's one of those things where even a hack is is useful if it's useful. Uh, and that's it. I'm not gonna put this on GitHub just for the embarrassment factor, but I will put out all the code on, on the blog post and basically you can run it. You can build any kind of uh, index.html to catch this stuff and you just put these tags in to catch it. And feel free to do with it what you will. That's it. I'll see you guys later.